Vipu, thank you very much for being here today. It's a pleasure. We're just in a session now with foreign investors and trying to understand the capital flow. But before we go there, can we start by telling us a little bit more about HDFC Capital? What do you do? You, do you guys do here in India? Is a large corporation? That was more, please. So uh, thanks. Uh, absolute pleasure to be here. Uh, so HDFC Capital is a subsidiary of uh, HDFC Bank, which is uh, one of the top five banks in the world. Uh, HDFC Bank is obviously the largest bank from a market cap perspective uh, in India, and uh, what HDFC Capital does is uh, raising third-party capital for investing in Indian real estate. Uh, we have been growing the private equity business for almost 15 years, run about uh, nine funds. Uh, we would be the largest uh, residential uh, private equity fund in India, uh, cumulative AUM of about $4 billion US dollars. Uh, extremely conservative organization, focus is uh, on seeing that we have right risk-priced assets. And uh, we have been a big bull on the India story, especially from a residential perspective, public markets, uh, private markets, uh, private credit. And uh, fortunately and uh, good for us that things have been uh, fairly good. Fantastic. And being so experienced about India, where do you see the best opportunities at the moment? Is there any specific asset class? Would you have a specific location or it depends on the opportunity? You know, we, so we discussed that internally uh, in the hall also, but uh, I think from a macro perspective, every segment of say in the Indian real estate context is a great opportunity. But having said that, it has always been a great opportunity in pretty much most of the segments. I think the key factor in the Indian real estate context is uh, choosing your partners locally wisely. The macros of whether it is a data center business, logistics, commercial, retail, hospitality, residential, I think they all make sense. Having said that, people have not made the kind of money they thought in the 2005 to 2008 period when a lot of investors came into India. Primarily because they probably did not choose their domestic partners right, or uh, probably more diligence and probably more uh, step-up approach to investing should have been done, which has not happened. India is not uh, a place where you can throw in $5 billion and say that it is going to grow. You have to understand how India works. And uh, I think to your question specifically, what segments will work? About 80% of India is uh, residential. Uh, balance 20% is everything else. Uh, I think uh, because of the structural financing issues, banks in India are not allowed to invest or finance lands and pre-construction expenses. And with so much uh, bullishness happening in the entire segment and the young population, demographics, infrastructure play, smaller towns becoming bigger towns, uh, we feel that we are at the beginning of what would be at least a seven, eight year cycle on the residential side. And there will be tons and tons of money to be made uh, in parent company investing, asset level equity, private credit, and even uh, things like rental housing. Fantastic. We were just talking a little bit before as well about the level of interest of foreign capital. And... It's not hard to imagine with such a positive situation in the in the local market and with situation being so complicated in Europe, the US, uh, the situation with Russia and Ukraine, because Russia could also compete with capital. Uh, uh, China as well is a big question mark. Uh, and you you just mentioned that you have been speaking to a lot of foreign investors that are very keen on finding something here in India but you haven't seen this capital being deployed yet. Uh, can you elaborate a little bit on that? So I think uh, a whole lot of global investors have increased their, uh, the weightage they would out tap put to India. And uh, their global CIOs, their boards are what I would say exploring. Uh, for every geography, uh, like in typical geographies, in, uh, there would be one or two investors which will lead but then the next barrage of investments comes from the secondary, second 
wave of people. And I think we are seeing that second wave where a whole lot of investors are seeing good investments being made, exits being made more importantly over the last five years in infrastructure, real estate, uh, and a lot of other platforms. And uh, we are seeing a lot of new to India investors looking at India, understanding what is happening, exploring, uh, meeting, and uh, it's a very, very positive sign that it's not about one or two investors. It's much more broad-based. The interest is much more broad-based in India. Very interesting. And the scenario is very positive. You know, there's a lot of things going very well here, and we are all optimistic about India, I can imagine. But is there anything that would keep you awake at night? So, um, as an individual and as an organization, if I can say that, we uh, don't use the word uh, very optimistic. I don't think uh, that exists in our dictionary. Uh, at best, we would be cautiously optimistic. I would be slightly less cautiously optimistic, but I think there are more than enough things uh, that can uh, be a problem. Uh, I think uh, there are geopolitical issues which are there, uh, which can probably become an issue. Uh, having said that, the best part about India, what I like is that you are dependent on the demand being India. So because the demand is here, across the segments and across products, it's a supply side issue. And uh, if supply side is sorted, then it's absolutely fine. But if it is sorted is a big question. And uh, that may be the other tipping factor which may, or stumbling block that can happen as far as the market is concerned on so much capital coming in, but if the infrastructure and the supply chain issues are not 100% has sorted, it may kind of be a damp turn to the party. Perfect. Vipu, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you.